This is the third section of chapter two, and this section is about the centers of mass of standard uniform plane laminas. So there are certain shapes where uh, we don't need to work out what the center of mass is. They're sort of been worked out already. Uh, so we can use sort of standard results to help us uh, solve more challenging problems. So the first standard result is if we have a circular lamina, a circle, then the center of mass is at the center of the circle. The second one is a rectangle or rectangular lamina. Now, with all the shapes that I'm going to be showing you, um, we're assuming that they're uniform in their mass. So they're not thicker or heavier in any one place than the other. It's, their mass is uniform across the whole shape. And the center of mass of a rectangle is where the two lines of symmetry uh, intersect. So you can see the two lines of symmetry in a rectangle where they intersect. That's where the center of mass is going to be. So now we're going to move on to triangles. I'm going to start with the equilateral triangle here. And what I've done is drawn on the lines of symmetry of an equilateral triangle. And they all cross at a point here, which is called the centroid of the triangle. And actually, this is where the center of mass is. So where the three lines of symmetry intersect, there we've got the center of mass. And the center of mass uh, always happens to be one third of the way along this line of symmetry measured from the midpoint end. So from here to here is one third along the length of the line or from the vertex end, two thirds along the length of that line. OK, uh, yeah, so one third there, two thirds here, one third here, two thirds here, one third, two thirds. Now we can apply this to any triangle. Now, if it's not a uh, uh, isosceles or equilateral triangle, there aren't going to be lines of symmetry. But we draw in these lines here, which we call medians. And these medians go from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And if we draw in all three medians, we locate the centroid, which is where the center of mass is. And from now, we're going to use the letter G, capital letter G, when we're referring to the center of mass. And again, it is also one third along this median line from the midpoint end. So if we know this distance here, it's going to go one third along that distance. And it's the same for all of the medians. So here it's lines of symmetry. For an isosceles triangle, it will be one line of symmetry and two medians. For any other triangle, it's going to be these three medians. And where those medians intersect, we've got the centroid, which is where the center of mass is. And you can try it for yourself. Just cut out a triangle uh, of any shape, like, let's say from card or something, draw in the medians, find that point, and you should be able to balance that piece of card on that point. Uh, that's given that the, the card has like a uniform mass, that center point there. And that's an interesting point about the center of mass is it becomes like this balancing point. You can uh, balance these shapes on these points. And the last shape that we've got here is going to be a sector, uniform sector of a circle. And if we draw in a line of symmetry such that we split this angle here into two equal parts, which we're going to call alpha, each part here alpha, and it's got a radius of R, then the center of mass is actually along this line of symmetry here at G. And the distance of that center of mass from the center of the circle, which would be this point here, is two times the radius times by the sine of this angle here. So sometimes if you're giving the angle of the whole thing, don't forget to divide it by two, divided by three times that angle. And that will give you the distance from the center of the sector to the center of mass. Example eight, a uniform triangular lamina has vertices um, one, four, three, two, and five, three. Find the coordinates of its center of mass. Now, we don't need to draw this triangle and draw in its medians and find uh, where the centroid of the triangle is. Remember, uh, what we can do is basically we're finding the average of the X coordinates and the average of the Y coordinates. We're going to have to add the X coordinates together and divide by three to find X bar. So that's going to be one plus three plus five divided by three. And we're going to do the same for. Uh, the y coordinates to find y bar 
Um, so that's going to be 4 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3. So we get 9 over 3, which is 3. And we get, uh, let's see, 5 plus 4, 9 over 3 again, which is 3. So the center of mass is going to be at the coordinate 3, 3. And if we were to draw this triangle out and draw in the medians, we would find that's where the centroid is at the point 3, 3. And here's just like a little diagram here just to prove it to you. Example nine, find the center of mass of the uniform triangular lamina shown. So we need to put the origin somewhere and I could put it at any point, but it just makes sense to put the origin at the point P. So this is gonna be my Y axis here. Uh, the line PQ is gonna be on the X axis. So P is gonna be at the origin with coordinate zero, zero. Q is going to be at the point 2A0. And then R is going to be at the point 0A. So now I can just do my working uh, with the origin at P. We're going to get a center of mass. So we'll add the X coordinates together, which are gonna be 0, 2A, and zero, so that's PQ and R divided by three. So that just gives me two thirds A, and we'll do the same for Y bar, add the Y coordinates together. So that's gonna be zero plus zero plus um, A, so that's PQ and R um, over three. So that just gives me one third A. Now, since we've made up our own origin, uh, we really should say where this center of mass is. So center of mass is two thirds A. So that's my X direction going across there from this, the Y axis, which is PR, from PR and the center, the other center of mass in the other direction is one third A from p q so we're finding the distance from basically the x-axis which we've called p q so we could put all of that together and say it's two thirds a and a third a from the point p example 10 the diagram shows a uniform a uniform semicircular lamina of radius six and center o find the center of mass of the lamina so for this we're just going to use that standard result uh, for a sector. So here's our standard result um, to find the center of mass. So we know it's along this line here and we're calling that G two times the radius times the sine of alpha over three times alpha. Forgot to mention it before, but alpha must be in radians. So for this question, uh, what we've got is R is equal to six, that's our radius. And alpha, that's gonna be half, of the angle here. So this full angle in radians is pi. So alpha is going to be pi over two, 90 degrees. And we just put that into the formula. So G is two times six times the sine of pi over two divided by three times pi over two. That gives us 12 divided by three uh, pi over two. And that simplifies to eight over pi giving you an exact answer. And to three significant figures, that'd be something like 2.55, but we can give an exact answer here. So to finish this off, we're just gonna say that um, the center of mass G is a distance of uh, pi, oh sorry, eight over pi centimeters from O on the line of symmetry of this semicircle. So you should now be able to do exercise 2C on pages 46 to 47 of the textbook. I've put in all the standard results here and a reminder that uh, 
work for a sector that when we have this angle here that that needs to be in radians.